Michelle Berrientes Vela continues this noon, and we've got a look inside the courtroom as proceedings get underway today. Local students getting an intro into a growing field, cybersecurity. And this noon, Tiffany Huertas has a look at the experiences they're able to take part in. Live from Case at 12. The news at noon starts right now. Fire investigators are hoping to find some answers among all the ashes inside a southeast side home. They are trying to figure out what caused the fire that sent two people and their pets running into the streets this morning. As Katrina Weber reports, it also left a firefighter in need of some medical attention. Thick smoke continues to pour out of the second floor of a home in the 100 block of Tipperary Avenue long after a man and woman got out of it safely on their own. Firefighters who were called there by a neighbor just before nine this morning rushed in at first, trying to make headway on the fire. They say along with the smoke, they also initially found flames coming from a crowded bedroom. Crews had trouble moving around, then had to move out to fight the fire from outside. Eventually, they got the upper hand, but not before the fire damaged the entire upstairs area. While all people made it out safely, there was concern for a while about the family's pets, but firefighters say those two dogs were found and they're safe. During the battle, a firefighter suffered a minor injury, a dislocated finger. He got help for that at the scene. Family members, meanwhile, came to the help of the people who escaped the fire. Firefighters say most of the damage from it was contained to the second floor, but what they didn't know right away is how it started. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Meantime, San Antonio firefighters are saying it was a faulty water heater that caused this fire inside a northeast side apartment complex. It happened around 2.30 along the 3400 block of Northeast Parkway, not too far from Eisenhower Road in Riddiman. Firefighters say when they got there, they found smoke from a corner apartment. Only two apartments in the building, though, were affected and no one was hurt. And flames caused a lot of commotion in a quiet Windcrest neighborhood this morning. Crews tell us the fire happened around 3 along Clear Drift and at Faircrest Drive. Firefighters say despite the damage, the home was empty and there was no damage to neighboring homes. No injuries were reported. A man walking across the street now has serious injuries after being hit by a car. It happened around 1030 last night near the intersection of I-35 and Eisenhower. Police say the man in his 40s crossing the access road when he was hit by a driver. He was taken to the hospital with leg and head trauma. Police say that the driver did stop and tried to help, so no charges will be filed. After a pause that lasted for months, ex Bear County Constable Michelle Barrientes Vela back in court as the sentencing phase of her trial is expected to finish this week. Vela found guilty four months ago on two counts of felony tampering with government records. The sentencing started just about 10 this morning. This is a live look inside the courtroom. And on the stand right now, that is James Richard, a former Somerset police chief and a deputy constable who worked under Barrientes Vela at Precinct 2. Vela faces anywhere from two years probation to 10 years in prison. We are live streaming the proceedings on our website, KSET.com, and on our KSET YouTube channel. Scan the QR code there if you'd like to watch that. Taking a look outside with live cans. Sun is out. The blue skies are nice and the temperature is good. Are you sure this is the start of January? It's still warm, right? And though we had some changes last night, cold front came through. You wouldn't really know it with regards to the temperatures. I mean, they are a little bit cooler, but still warm. It's the humidity that really makes the difference. We saw those humidity levels drop off, and the air is much drier now with some gusty northwesterly winds. Of course, that also upped our mountains here. I'll show you that count here in just a second. First, we start with the satellite picture. Just some high clouds streaming through. It's going to be a great afternoon. Some off and on filtered sun, but no big deal. Temperatures right now sitting in the 70s in most spots here around the area. 74 at the airport, 67 Kerrville, 68 Fredericksburg, 65 in Junction. Place that started off in the 40s this morning. That's where we're headed by tomorrow morning. It's going to be a chilly start to your Wednesday. 72 Hello to 73 Rio Medina, 70 right now in Seguin. As I said, a great afternoon, and that's due in large part to these low dew points. Dew points in the 20s and 30s, it's extremely dry air, and that dry air sticks around for a couple days, which will make for those cool mornings and nice afternoons. Today, 76 at 3 o'clock, we're up to near 77 for a high today, 69 at 7 o'clock, 65 by 8 p.m., and 58 by 11 p.m. 
We do have some rain chances though we need to talk about and that mountain cedar count. We'll have more on that coming up in just a few minutes. We're definitely feeling that. Thank you, Justin. A career that's custom made for kids who are into computers and want to make a good living in one of the fastest growing industries. Cybersecurity expected to grow by leaps and bounds over the next few years. And Tiffany Huerta shows us where kids are getting their hands on the future. What we really want from students is for them to learn about cyber and STEM, uh, to be inspired by cyber and STEM, and then to put their hands on cyber and STEM. Since opening in August of last year, thousands of local students have visited Area 21, located inside the Techport Center and Arena. You know, our goal with Area 21 Open is to have 100,000 students coming through this space every year. The San Antonio Museum of Science and Technology created a security operations center where they offer different opportunities for students. Here, students become cyber warriors. They learn how to detect, investigate, and respond to cyber threats. We teach three topics. Uh, one, one of those topics is uh, the basic things that you do on a computer, virus scanning, uh, fire, uh, setting up firewalls, and so forth. Uh, we also teach the students about ciphers. So, like, why would you want to encrypt content? And, and how do you encrypt content? And then we make sure that they know what a security operations center is really like. Giselle De Leon is a STEM educator here. And the first reaction they get is, wow, what's this? What's the, they're asking so many questions. Giselle grew up nearby and says this opportunity is changing lives. Seeing the tech port come in here and us with SAMSAT come into the area and give STEM opportunities for kids to be more hands-on, no pressure of high-level academia. We bring it down to them and they bring it up to us and it's just it's awesome it's a wonderful experience there are big plans for this space we're going to continue and expand our programming tiffany huertas ksat 12 news so coming up the spurs not exactly enjoying their trip to the big apple at least not yet the nets were a lot of nothing but nets last night got highlights on the way For the second day, mourners continue lining up to pay their respects to Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI one final time as he lies in state inside St. Peter's Basilica. On Thursday, Pope Francis will lead the funeral mass for his predecessor. ABC's Mike Marza with how the stage is being set for this groundbreaking moment in the Catholic Church. Hundreds of thousands of mourners have now passed by the body of Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI. To actually witness it in the grand scale, everything in the Vatican is a grand scale of Christianity, and to see it in person, it's it's larger than life. Autumn and her son Kane visiting from Florida, paying their respects as security is getting tighter. We have uh, the staging area set up, extra police, extra fire brought in, regional command posts. Final preparations are underway for his funeral mass in St. Peter's Square. I wanted to show you where the service will take place for Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI. You see all the chairs have been set up right inside St. Peter's Square. Pope Francis will be presiding over this service. It's scheduled to begin at 3.30 Eastern Time Thursday morning. After it's over, the body of the former Pope will be buried immediately in the crypt of the grotto under the basilica where more than 90 Popes have been laid to rest. He was uh, such an important uh, and incredible man, and especially for a Catholic uh, religion. The 95-year-old former pontiff served eight years before stepping down in 2013, citing his health, becoming the first Pope to retire in more than 600 years. Criticized for how he handled the sex abuse scandal that that's rocked the church. He was also a conservative icon. Archbishop of New York, Timothy Cardinal Dolan, is here to pay a personal pilgrimage. Pope Benedict XVI appointed him to Archbishop in 2009. I think that simplicity, that solitude, the interior life, his study, his prayer, his humility, I think that'll endure. And the United States today designating the U.S. Ambassador to the Holy See, Joseph Donnelly, to officially represent the U.S. here at the service on Thursday. Mike Marza, ABC News, the Vatican. Once again, outside with live cam, you wonder, wonder what happened to winter. Well, that's a nice looking day, nice clouds. I mean, it looks. This is what it should look like, like in April. Something like that, yeah. I know there's a lot of disagreement in the newsroom over whether this is good winter weather or not. I personally think it's it's nice. A lot of people are ready for another cold snap. It's not in the forecast, at least not now or anytime soon. We do have a couple fronts, but nothing that's going to close down a whole lot. The aquifer is down two tenths of a foot, 637.2. 
in your pollen count, this is the bad news today. If you're going to have uh, any sort of bad news in this forecast, Mountain Feeder is very high at 11,550, so it jumped up today. We had some northwesterly winds. It probably did it. We'll see where it lands tomorrow, but we are in the thick of mountain cedar season. More on that coming up after the break. Started taking down Christmas decorations outside yesterday. I started taking down the ones inside. So we were doing outside, and it was like I'm out there in flip flops and shorts and t-shirts taking out Christmas decorations. Go, what? Santa would not agree with that. When it's freezing cold. Yeah. I yes. Guess. Yesterday was warm. It was. It, we got into the 80s. We got up to 82 here in San Antonio. But not, not only that, it was humid too. It was. It. It didn't feel like January yesterday. I, I'll admit that. Today's a little bit better. It's still going to be warm, but we've lost the humidity. It just feels maybe a little a little cooler too. We'll see temperatures in the upper 70s versus low 80s. It does make a difference. Uh, we want to talk a little bit about Mountain Cedar, where we stand, and uh, show you the chart here when it comes to when we peak with Mountain Cedar. That typically is in January, so we're headed into that peak uh, early February before things really start to calm down. We always say Valentine's Day is kind of a good cutoff for when Mountain Cedar really starts to fall, but we're getting into the thick of it. And today's count, 11,000. 550. You can see the last few days we've had some very high counts uh, and there's no reason to believe we won't see that going forward. Now we're not going to get the gusty northwesterly winds like we did this morning, but the numbers probably stay elevated. It's always hard to predict that, but that's the kind of the, the general idea as uh, we get later into the season. Wind gusts right now aren't so bad. We've got some gusts to 16 at Bernie Stage, 11 at Boulevard, 16 Canyon Lake, but nothing that's too, too high. Even with the front last night, Winds picked up briefly, but uh, it wasn't a very, very uh, windy night with that cold front. What it did do, though, is uh, bring in the lower humidity and temperatures right now 74 degrees at the airport, 74 at Stinson, 74 at Kelly and 75 over at Randolph. We're looking at partly cloudy skies, and this is just in the form of some high clouds that are streaming through west east. You'll see that off and on today, but uh, it's not going to really block out the sun all that much. So that's why temperatures will be allowed to warm up pretty nicely here. 76 in New Braunfels, 74 Gonzalez, 76 right now in Kennedy. You're at 68 Bernie Stage, closing in on 70. Then there in Bandera with mostly sunny skies for you. Dew points as we talked about, low 20s and 30s. That's desert to very dry air. And there's uh, not going to be a rise in dew points until we get into Friday and Saturday. So until then, we'll enjoy this nice dry air. The frontal boundary kind of snakes its way through Texas and we're starting to see uh, the drier air infiltrate the entire state. Once you go east of that, though, there's still a lot of energy, a lot of moisture. And there are severe storms ongoing now across parts of Mississippi and Alabama. Tornado watch box in effect there. There's going to be a widespread severe weather outbreak today. Already is. It's underway. And this is going to be a really busy area with, unfortunately, some damaging storms as they march east towards uh, Georgia and Atlanta. A little bit later this evening, uh, this storm system pushes east and you can see where the severe weather risk is today. This dark red area is where there is the highest risk for severe storms stretching from New Orleans to Montgomery, Alabama this afternoon. As for our forecast, a lot of sun, 75 at 2 o'clock, 76, 3 p.m., 77. Your high temperature today down to 72 at 6 o'clock, 69 by 7 p.m. Now remember with dry air, Temperatures are allowed to warm up pretty quickly and then they fall pretty quickly. So this evening it'll get chilly pretty quick. And then by say midnight, we're already in the mid fifties and we'll fall down into the forties by tomorrow morning. So it'll be jacket weather to start. We were in the fifties this morning, but forties tomorrow morning, Thursday morning and Friday morning. Jackets to start. You won't need them by the afternoon. It'll be one of those days where it starts off cool, but ends up pretty nice. As we look long term here and these are the upper level winds. So the jet has that dip off to the east by Thursday and off to the west, but where where there is a kind of a, a ridge. So that means nice weather Thursday and Friday, but things start to change as we get into the weekend. Some energy comes in in the upper levels. We get a frontal boundary coming in on Saturday evening, and that should be enough to kick off some showers and maybe a few storms. I think our window is probably Saturday night into Sunday morning, our best opportunity 
add some rain and then that clears out by Sunday afternoon. So here's how it looks on the seven day forecast 75 tomorrow, 74 Thursday, 76 on Friday, the cool mornings as we showed you and then humidity returns late Friday into Saturday and we get a 30% chance of rain Saturday night into Sunday morning. This next front also not a big cool down just takes us down into the 60s, but hopefully we get some rain out of it. We need it in the worst way, guys. That is no understatement. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The Cowboys have to take care of themselves and then get a little help, and they can still win the NFC East, believe it or not. And Buffalo Bills safety DeMar Hamlin remains sedated. More on his condition, his condition coming up in sports. The Spurs is a big album for a two-game road trip. First Brooklyn, then the Knicks. Devin himself back in the lineup after missing the last couple of games. Nothing seemed to work for the Spurs last night, though. First quarter, Jakob Pertl finds Jeremy Sohan, cut to the baskets. That's a bucket and a foul. He hit the free throw. It's 8-7. Brooklyn responds. 7-0 run. Kevin Durant nails a jumper with contact. Three-point play makes it 15-7 Brooklyn. Vassell tries to keep it close. Three ball, but San Antonio trails 37-25 after the first quarter. The Nets pull away in the second quarter off the miss. Kyrie Irving gets the big put-back slam. Whoa. That gets Brooklyn crowd on their feet and gets everybody all pumped up. Brooklyn shot 55% from three, 62 overall. San Antonio never really make a game of it. They end up falling 139 to 103. So now they get a day off today to enjoy the Big Apple. And then tomorrow night, it's back at it against the New York Knicks. Tip off in Madison Square Garden is at 630. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys still have a chance to win the NFC East, but a lot of things have to happen if they're going to pull that off. First, the Cowboys have to beat the Commanders in Washington. Then they need the Eagles to lose to the New York Giants. Okay, here's a little twist on that one. Jalen Hurts expected to be back for the Eagles for that game. Dak Prescott has to do a better job of taking care of the ball as well if the Cowboys are going to do much in the postseason in the win over the Titans last Thursday Prescott threw two more interceptions in the 27 13 victory that gets Prescott a career high in interceptions with 14 and remember he missed five games with a fractured thumb he picked up in the season to open her against Tampa Bay his previous high 2017 was 13 but that was nearly 500 pass attempts compared to just 357 this year. It's frustrating, but there's nothing I can do about it the same sense. So, I mean, yeah, it might be frustrating, but by the time that uh, I'd say a minute after I've sat down on the on the sideline, I've got it out of my head. Um, I've, I've said my words I needed to say to myself um, and, and just have moved on at that point. So, uh, yeah, it is frustrating, as I said, um, whether it's off your, off your guy's hands or whether I throw it behind the receiver and he makes the play um, and, the, and the cornerback makes the play, they're all frustrating and somehow or another they've got to stop. All right, so the Commanders and the Cowboys kick off Sunday at 325. All right, now to that terrifying on-field collapse. Buffalo Bills safety DeMar Hamlin in critical condition after suffering cardiac arrest following a tackle during Monday night's game against the Bengals. ABC's Morgan Norwood is in Cincinnati with more details. This is the last thing you want to see. This afternoon, Buffalo Bills player DeMar Hamlin in critical condition after a horrifying on-field collapse during Monday night football. The team says Hamlin went into cardiac arrest. I think we're seeing and hearing a tremendous amount of speculation about what could cause a sudden cardiac arrest. I think the question is, was this a primary cardiac event? Was it a primary neurologic event or a combination? So the 24-year-old safety collapsed collapsed at 8.55 p.m. Concerned teammates mm. and opponents surrounding him, many in tears. With everybody watching, praying, and hoping for the best. 30 minutes later, Good Hamlin break. rushed to UC Medical, Medical Center at 9.25 p.m. after medics administered CPR for minutes on the field. Hamlin's family racing to his bedside, his mother watching the shocking collapse from the stands. You know, he's fighting, he's a fighter. The family's in good spirits. We're honestly just taking it minute by minute, hour by hour. For more than an hour, stunned fans awaited word of Hamlin's condition or even the fate of the game before the league announced the critical late season matchup was postponed. Last night was a sobering moment, not only for the team, but for the fans and just everyone right now. And our prayers go out to his family and to all those involved in this. And before playing professional football, Hamlin started a foundation supporting his community toy drive that GoFundMe has already ballooned to more than three and a half million dollars as fans rally behind his recovery.
I'm Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Cincinnati. And two other quick points. His family released a statement earlier today thanking all of the first responders that were there at the stadium and all the doctors and nurses who've been attending to him at the hospital there in Cincinnati. And also, still no word on what they're going to do with this game. It was There were some playoff implications between the Bengals and the Bills, so the NFL still has yet to come out and uh, make an announcement on that. They said they'll wait for the appropriate time. And coming up today at 5 and 6, we're going to have uh, some more information about that condition uh, okay. that he may have suffered from, as well as some um, breakthroughs that are happening in the medical world having to do with heart rhythms. And that's at 5 and 6? At 5 and 6 right. today. Look forward to that. It's only January 3rd, but some folks may already be struggling to keep those New Year's resolutions. I am. The key to keeping your goals and how your pets can help. DNA and a vehicle traced back to the suspect in the Idaho student murders, but the attorney for the man accused says he believes he will be cleared of the charges against him. Brian Koberger's public defender, Jason Labar, speaking to NBC today and said that his client has a calm demeanor. Koberger was arrested in Pennsylvania last week for the murders of the four University of Idaho students in September, rather in November. He is currently being held without bail in Pennsylvania. And according to law enforcement who was briefed into the investigation, investigators did focus on Koberger after they traced a vehicle and DNA back to him. Fully autonomous robots could soon change the way wars are fought. Experts say it may be only a matter of time before either Russia or Ukraine or both deploy drones programmed to find and attack targets without help from humans. Those would mark a revolution in military technology as profound as the introduction of the machine gun. Ukraine already has semi-autonomous drones and endowed with artificial intelligence. Russia also claims to possess AI weaponry. It is a major day in Congress. It is convening in the new term and a new Speaker of the House will be chosen today. We're on standby for that to happen and we will take it live when it does. Republicans have a majority of members, but GOP leader Kevin McCarthy is struggling to clinch the votes he needs to take the gavel. ABC's Faith Abube reports nothing else can proceed in the House until this Speaker has been voted in. A dramatic showdown in the House of Representatives as voting to decide who will wield the speaker's gavel gets underway. With Republicans now in control of the chamber, GOP leader Kevin McCarthy has already moved into the speaker's office. But uncertainty is looming over whether he'll become second in line to the presidency, as more than a dozen conservative members are poised to oppose his election. We may have a battle on the floor. But the battle is for the conference and the country, and that's fine with me. Florida Representative Matt Gates is among five far-right members vowing to vote against him, despite McCarthy making major concessions, including a promise to make it easier for members to oust him as speaker. If you want to drain the swamp, you cannot put the biggest alligator in charge of the exercise. And it is true that we struggle with trust with Mr. McCarthy. Representative Bob Good on Fox News. I suspect 10 to 15 members will vote against him. McCarthy needs 218 votes. Republicans have a razor thin majority of 222, so he can only afford to lose four GOP members. He's counting on every vote, including that of controversial New York Congressman elect George Santos. Santos has admitted to making several false statements about his personal and professional background. His legal troubles mounting as prosecutors in Brazil plan to reopen a 2008 fraud case against him for allegedly stealing a check. McCarthy silent about calls for Santos to step down. And all House business, including the swearing in of lawmakers, is frozen until a new speaker is elected. And if McCarthy fails to get enough support on the first ballot, it would be the first time in 100 years the House would need multiple votes to elect a speaker. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. Former President Donald Trump might make a return to Facebook soon. Facebook's parent company, Meta, says it is considering allowing the former president back on its platforms. It expects to make a final decision in the coming weeks. Trump was banned from Meta's platforms, which include Facebook and Instagram, after the attack on the Capitol in January of 2021. Initially, the ban was indefinite, but that was later revised to two years. Those two years ended Saturday. However, a representative for Meta says an official announcement won't happen just yet. Sam Bankman Fry, the 
disgraced founder of bankrupt cryptocurrency exchange FTX is expected to plead innocent in court today. He's accused of cheating investors out of billions of dollars in a scheme that's resulted in FTX's collapse. He is facing eight criminal counts, including wire fraud and conspiracy to commit money laundering. He's expected to plead not guilty in Manhattan. If all of those charges end in a conviction, he could face up to 115 years in prison. Outside with live cam, 75 degrees, a little cloudy, but I guess if we're going to um, deal with this, we might as well just enjoy it and go outside and pretend it's... It's Texas. It's Texas. <laughs> enjoy. Yeah, it, it, really, it's good weather. We're starting off uh, on a good note here in 2023. Uh, temperatures will be very comfortable this afternoon, really, for most of this work week. I want to show you the difference in dew point from yesterday to today. If you remember, it was sticky yesterday. Today is very different. We've got dew points some 34 degrees lower than they were yesterday. And that, that really is most of the area. We're seeing those dew points much, much lower. So the air is much, much drier. And that does a couple things for us. Obviously, it feels a little bit better outside, but it also allows those morning lows to be uh, quite a bit cooler here over the next couple of days. Right now, again, mostly sunny. We're at 74 degrees at the airport. Northerly winds at about 10. Winds have not been all that gusty, but you could see a few brief gusts up to 20 miles per hour this afternoon. As we look across the state, there is much colder air in the Texas Panhandle. 39 there, 54 Lubbock, but the air really moderates as you go south. 81 in Brownsville. Front is yet to pass you by, but it will, and it will cool down some there today. As we look at the big picture, we've got some teens up across parts of the Dakotas, Montana. It's cold up there, not bitter cold, but cold, and some of that air is moving across the country. We're really not going to feel any of that here. Your KSAT 12-hour forecast, 76 at 3 o'clock, 77 your high temperature today. We fall down into the 60s by probably 7 o'clock and then down into the 50s, so this is a pretty rapid cool down by midnight and some chilly readings by tomorrow, as we said. Uh, we're going to take a look, another look across the country, talk about some of that severe weather and the snow going on with this current system coming up in just a few minutes. Staying hydrated isn't just good for the short term. What a new study is saying it can do to get you to a ripe old age.